Good morning, everyone. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Group call for July 7th, 2021. Welcome. And we'll start with any announcements. Oh, and I need to post the Ethernet link in chat. I will do that now. Please go ahead and sign in. Um, does anybody have any announcements or updates? I do know that 21.1 was released shortly after our last call. I believe, I think it was June 28th, if I remember correctly. Um, Does anybody have anything else in the way of announcements or updates or news? Okay. Um, just a moment. All right, I'm going to try sending a quick email to it and see if we get a response to it. chat amongst yourselves. Well, thank you, Karen. Um, if you want to go ahead and, and begin a discussion, we can do that. Um, we have um, done some proctoring here at ISU as well, um, and we can talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> Um, 
Okay, I'll, I'll dive in a bit. Um, uh, we have various instructors trying various um, do-it-yourself approaches. Um, some have used this tool, the blue button, which we have available to them in Sakai um, to try to proc live proctor tests themselves. Um, some have used Zoom for that. Um, but we also, um, uh, we contracted with Longsight to build a Proctorio integration for Sakai. Um, and that got put on our system uh, April, I'm trying to remember when. <laughs> uh, no, it got finished in April, got put on our system in late May on our production system. And we're just kind of trying to get back to uh, using it with some instructors this fall. Um, so it's been it's been difficult, and um, um, and no no instructors have used it yet. But but that's where we are with that. If anyone's interesting, and yes, Proctorio is. Um, Jennifer's asking about Proctorio. That is a. Um, a video monitoring is not live person monitoring. So it, it, it records video, audio if you want it to, uh, periodic screenshots and gives that information and, and does an analysis of it to flag uh, potential cheating and instructors have access to that information uh, pretty much instantaneously as soon as the exam is done um, or for review and um, further a closer look at, at problem areas. Um, <clears throat> he's trying to find us. Um, let's see. Just so unorganized this There he is. Good morning, Tonko. Good morning, Charles. Took a little effort to, to get him. Thank you for joining us. I, I apologize myself for not contacting you kind of ahead of time to make sure that you were ready and, and willing to go. So that's on me a little bit as well. It's been a long week um, already for me. So. Um, welcome. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself um, and I will make you a presenter. So you should be able to share your screen. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Tom Kuteideman. I'm an educational advisor at Hotel School The Hague. Um, I'm not sure if I should uh, allow my camera or if it's uh, preferred not to. Up to you. I'll just share my camera. Uh, but um, I'm an educational advisor at Hotel School The Hague, and um, I discussed, um, I think, about uh, two weeks ago now, uh, after a period conference together with uh, Josh and uh, Wilma, a little bit about um, how we are dealing uh, during uh, the pandemic with online proctoring using Sakai. And that's when uh, Wilma thought, okay, this might be interesting uh, also to share with uh, the community in the teaching and learning group. So um, that's... Uh, and actually, we are uh, at this point in time, right, uh, or uh, this morning, I had the last exam we had online um, uh, from this block. So I'm uh, right in the middle of, indeed, uh, the proctoring procedure. And what I wanted to um, talk about with the teaching and learning group is um, how we have used or um, set up uh, the online proctoring uh, within Sakai. We are using a level uh, three proctoring. 
and um, which means that um, we do have a lockdown on the computers. We do have um, the screen recording, video camera recording, audio recording of the students while they take their exam. And um, we get automatic flags of uh, 17 points by artificial intelligence. And then the proctors from the company that we use, they actually pick up on another uh, number of flags. And then um, in the end, we get the report and we show uh, or we use that um, uh, to look at all the flags ourselves with uh, proctors that are uh, Hotel School de Hague employed. Got uh, a few of them. And they make sure uh, to see whether all the flags were indeed uh, correctly set or if it was, for example, an ambulance or whatever passing by outside, which might also trigger a sound flag. So um, that is what we are using. And um, um, what we have done is uh, to take away a lot of concerns that there uh, are with students and uh, the educational community about privacy concerns. Um, uh, that is what I also told uh, Josh and Wilma. Um, we have an onboarding program for students where they first get to know both the proctoring program and how it is invasing uh, 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 potentially their privacy. We are totally transparent about it. And what we stated is we need this to be able to um, uh, to keep the, 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 the value of their diplomas, because if there would be no proctoring, um, we actually, yeah, due to potential fraud, we have seen that happen in other uh, educational institutions, you might get a total uh, erosion of the value of your diplomas so um, and what we also do is we allow the students to take the exams in each or any room as long as they are the single user of that specific room and uh, as long as they have a valid internet connection that uh, helps them to do their assessment that way we have taken away one part of the privacy issue and that is uh, i think that people are invading my privacy when doing an online exam but actually um, they're allowed to do it uh, to take the exam anywhere it could be an office building it could be uh, in their parents home uh, in the living room it could be anywhere where they want to as long as it's not in their own room and they're allowed to uh, cover up anything in the room um, before they start doing uh, the 360 degree room scan, which we, we make them do. Um, so that way they know that we do care about the privacy, but we have them, uh, to have them do uh, a 360 degree room scan so that we know that there's nothing in the room or no one in the room that actually can help them during the assessment. Now, um, what I uh, would like to share with you is um, uh, the onboarding page that we use so that students, uh, um, they actually get to do an onboarding test, which is a very simple uh, test. It's about musical uh, questions like a pub quiz, but they get to do a little test, nothing hotel school related, to get familiar with Sakai's test and quizzes tool. Um, that's what we use uh, for the online uh, tests and uh, with ProctorTrack, which is actually our uh, provider of the proctoring service. Now, uh, what we found is that actually the Sakai's test and quizzes, it's one of the most rich featured uh, test and quizzes tools. We've compared it to a lot of uh, yeah, uh, specific uh, digital assessment companies and the test and quizzes are actually doing a better job for us than any of the other uh, professional providers. So, if you don't mind, I will uh, share my screen. Let me see how that works in the blue button. Uh, where is it? I could have been more prepared on this one. I don't see... Ah. There it is, screen sharing. Um, 
and I'm going to share my entire screen and take you to our Sakai instance. Oh. There it is. And I'm going to take you into um, one of the exam pages. This is uh, a Spanish exam we had. And what we provide uh, the students with in our exam uh, environment, we create exam work sites so we can keep truly track of uh, students also with uh, dyslexia, for example, uh, they get extra time. And we can properly, in sections, we can uh, separate those who are have regular time, who have extra time. And on every exam page, we start with an exam explanation. So the students, uh, they get to see um, how to start the exam. They get an, um, a quick reminder of what do they need to do before the exam starts. That's the part that I'm uh, highlighting now. So we ask them to do uh, both a room scan and a desk scan. The room scan, a 360 degree room scan, so that we can see everything sitting in the room, slowly performed. They must show the top of their desk, showing all uh, the exam aids which are sitting on the desk, and they must show um, whatever is underneath the desk, so that we know that no one or nothing is hidden. And they clearly show the bottom side of the desk surface. Then we also ask them to show uh, to use a mirror to show the laptop and the monitor screen um, uh, or monitor screen so that we know that there's no sticky notes or anything uh, uh, attached to the screen. And if an exam allows for scrap paper, for example, they must show both the front and the back side of each uh, scrap uh, sheet of uh, scrap paper allowed. Now, if they fail to uh, do any of those steps or, or one of those steps, the exam will be reported to our exam committee and it might be declared uh, invalid. And we also provide the students with clear support guidelines so uh, they can uh, contact us through Microsoft Teams that is allowed, but only for the purpose of contacting us. And for the rest, they have to put their phones out of reach which is also visible during the uh, desk scan. And um, what we also have is we provide two banners on top of each um, uh, exam. And I can uh, show you the banner content. Um, I need to go to the admin workspace. So there's uh, one banner which we show uh, 30 minutes before the exam it seems a lot of text but this banner actually uh, takes away most of the questions that we have from students during assessments so how do they need to start they need to start it through the proctor track uh, button on the left hand side in the uh, menu uh, they must copy and paste the access code to get uh, into the exam and um Using those banners um, across the top of the screen during assessments made um, the number of support calls we got from uh, like 30 to 60 calls in a 200 person exam drop down to maybe two or three calls that we get at the start of an assessment. Then after 10 minutes into the exam, the first banner, it uh, goes away and then we have a second banner. And that one uh, remains there uh, during the entire rest of the exam. So as long as ProctorTrack is running, if there's an error or an issue, you can always return to the test and quiz and copy the access code or contact us if you need help. So that way, uh, a lot of anxiety of the students is taken away. Um, they read this every uh, start of the exam is presented to them. And every uh, morning of an exam uh, from, from 7.30 or 8, um, we provide also a pop-up, which is uh, actually containing somewhat the same content, but everyone has to click it away on the day of the exam. It's the first thing they see, it gets thrown, uh, thrown in their face, 
and they must click it away so they should have actively uh, read the content now um what we found is that um the amount of fraud committed it is actually quite minimal um we had some cases of fraud that we have found um but it's actually far less um than we used to have in a normal written sit down exam situation and um we also uh asked back the student community uh, uh we asked them for feedback and it's not because they totally feel anxious about okay i'm being monitored and um what it also state is that anxiety is taken away because we do allow them I can take you there. You do allow them to take this demo test and quiz where they see all the um, uh, different question types that we actually use in real assessments. They get to experience each and every single question type in a demo test and quiz. And um, the demo testing quiz they do that is also their onboarding that they do for proctor track so that way they get to experience both the side proctor track side how to install it what it does on them how it makes them feel emotionally um and uh, it shows them um how to work with the different question types and um yeah, ProctorTrack will provide the assessment password, so that makes sure that they must start ProctorTrack, otherwise they will never be able to get the password. And ProctorTrack provides it actually also, um, how do you call it? Uh, it's a masked password, so they only can copy-paste it, but they don't know what they copy and paste. And um, yeah, this way we get uh, students that are that know what they can expect they know what it looks like um, and it's very simple fun questions so they really uh, while doing the onboarding they actually have uh, quite a lot of fun so that it's an extra step in taking away the anxiety um, so this is what i actually wanted to present and i wanted to feel uh, or to ask uh, the teaching and learning group um, how do you feel about proctoring uh, and what keeps you from wanting to do proctoring? Uh, of course, I know all the concerns about privacy. I know all the concerns about fraud. But uh, in a lockdown situation like we have experienced till recently, what would keep you from doing the proctoring and what, how could maybe we help you to move forward because we have uh, also quite some experience uh, at this point in time that I'm willing to share with everyone uh, who's uh, looking for information, advice, experience from the users. I will unshare my screen and see if there's any uh, questions at this point in time. I hope it was a bit clear and not going too fast. I see one uh, question from uh, Jennifer. Um, are these exam for a whole uh, class or group? Um, that the uh, PAs, uh, ah. um, the PA messages are actually going across the entire campus. So um, we have specific exam weeks. And during the exam weeks, we don't mind that other people also see the PA uh, system messages because we actually want everyone to read them and read them more and more and have them printed in the brain. Um, so, but we do have two specific exam weeks and during those exam weeks, that's when the messages pop up. We are not capable or we do not send them out to specific groups because I think, but I'm not sure about that, that we would have to uh, to say to whom they are visible. But um, no, we don't do that, to be honest. So it's for the entire university, but all of them are dealing with exams during that week. So we don't mind that everyone gets them uh, imprinted on the retina. I hope that's an answer, but it could be an interesting one for the uh, teaching and learning group to have PA messages if you could indeed link them to uh, either sections within a course or maybe even uh, 
link them to the specific course. That would be a nice feature. Any other so, questions? How have your faculty responded to the use of Parker Track? Do are all of them required to use it, or is it um, they get to choose whether to use it? Yeah. No, um, proper track, it's a must do because um, what we found is uh, we first tried uh, in, in, in the beginning of the lockdown during the pandemic, um, we had to take our resort to Microsoft Teams. It was the only thing we had and just have every student switch on their camera and uh, switch on their sound uh, or not uh, mute their microphones because otherwise it would be... Uh, too much, but they had to switch all on their camera. But that was a situation that did not work. Um, the faculty actually do like uh, ProctorTrack. We have shown them all and we include them all if we find potential fraud or suspicion of fraud. We always include the faculty in uh, what we have found, how we have found it, a uh, breakdown to every single detail that we uh, think we have found and we share it with the faculty and they are very happy at this point in time um, in how it's going um, and once more we keep stressing and uh, that we totally adhere to the gdpr regulations we're uh, in europe we're in the netherlands so uh, it's actually one of the greater goods that we have privacy and the concern about privacy so um, uh, that is also something I wanted to state indeed. Um, we do allow students to opt out. So if they don't want to be proctored, they can comp they come to campus. We were allowed only even during the lockdown uh, for examinations, we could open up, but then taken uh, into account, the uh, what is it, six foot? Uh, it's the one and a half meter distance, etc. But um, we actually found that the last runs, uh, the last two runs that we have for exams, no students chose to opt out. Uh, actually, they asked, could we please do this off campus because we are afraid. Um, we had quite some uh, outbreaks uh, with dense groups of people, uh, people and even in schools. And that was especially where you still would find during the lockdown even some uh, groups of people. So uh, they actually responded very fine, both the faculty and the students, to the use of ProctorTrack. But we do offer an opt-out possibility if you don't want it and you have ground for that, you can actually reason why you would want to opt out. Whichever reason it is, it would be granted, but you have to take a little effort to opt out. So it's not just, okay, uh, I don't feel like it, and I opt out. But on the other hand, this is also how we could, um, students that actually would want to take uh, in the earlier stages uh, an exam on campus and would uh, be tested positive or potentially uh, were in close contact with someone who was tested positive, they could still do their exams because we did offer proctor track uh, exams. So the case could still uh, go into quarantine and still take their exam. So it was actually uh, highly appreciated by the students. Interesting. Because yeah. we, we, we have also um, implemented Proctor Track on a limited basis at our university. Um, so it's, but it's, we don't have the same kind of um, organizational setup that you do in that, you know, instructors are responsible for reviewing any potential flags or anything like that um, that comes up during, during the exam. Um, so we don't have the kind of the, yeah. the, the support that you're providing for that, that review purpose. Yeah, I have to say, in the initial state, we were also thinking about using, indeed, um, the instructors themselves. But then we thought, normally, we have like two or three invigilators next to each head invigilator in an exam room mm -hmm. of, let's say, 60, 70 persons. So, uh, usually, the head invigilator is one of the faculty, and then we have... Uh, the invigilators, they are people that we actually um, 
uh, have contracted during the exam periods. So what mm -hmm. we did is now um, we made um, the three better ones that we used to have as uh, head invigilators uh, from the contracting company, we made them e-proctors and actually mm -hmm. with the three of them, they go through all of the flags and uh, for every exam and it does not take them so much time because they only need to review the flags that have been raised and every now and then they do a spot check and what we ask them to do is indeed do uh, the, the room scan that is what they have to do a full check upon because that gives you a lot of uh, insight in if a student is looking away uh, or you have facial suspicious looks what are they looking at what could they be looking at and um, we have also given, uh, we, we changed for last week we had just now, we changed the instructions slightly, so the students must have their camera like this. So the top of their head must be at the top of uh, the, 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 the proctoring window, so that you do see arm shoulder movement while they're working. And if they're reaching mm -hmm. out for something, you can see it. So uh, that is something we did learn, okay, we need to have somewhat more grip on what's happening there and they must put their phones out of sight at the start of uh, the exam and we know that people might have multiple phones they are not allowed to wear watches so no smart watches can be used and um, yeah there is still of course there is a risk a risk of fraud students will find their ways around a lot of things and um, that's where we also have a discussion now with ProctorTrack because they used to have a second camera option, which is taken away now because of bandwidth issues, but under the hood, it's still present. And we asked them if it could be either switched on on a university level or if specifically for us, they could switch it back on because in next rounds, we would like actually uh, we would actually like to have that second camera option so that you have from the side also a view on what's happening continuously in the surrounding of that keyboard. Uh, so that is one of the improvements we have asked for. So that means, <clears throat> that means they would have to have a second separate webcam available to them um, for that second camera. Uh, how, how would you do that? Yeah, uh, it's a smartphone and all of our students, yeah, um, we're dealing with uh, higher education, I have to say. So uh, all of our students do have a smartphone and they must have it present because that's their only resource that they have to call us if there's um, an issue, a technical issue during their assessment. And we actually came across no technical issues except for people accidentally closing uh, their exam and needed to get back in. But if they want to reach us, they have to call us via MS Teams on their phone because Teams on uh, the laptop, we have stated, it's not allowed. Uh, that would uh, give them too much opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so all of them do have a phone. So um, And ProctorTrack provides an app which can be installed on both I uh, or, um, iPhone and okay. Android, um, which makes it a second camera. And they only switched gotcha. off that option uh, lately. Uh, but as I stated, we asked them to switch it at least for us back on. And uh, they're really looking into it. Their dev team is looking into it now. Mm -hmm. um, so another question, if I mm -hmm. may. Um, ha how Certainly. many students do you have? Um, we have in total some uh, 2,400 plus or minus some, some, some change. But uh, 2,400 active students and um, during an exam round, what we uh, have asked our uh, schedule office to do is uh, um, usually one exam of one course, it's about uh, one, uh, sorry, 200 something maximum students. So that's actually the biggest exam we have. And if you have multiple of those, what we try to do is spread them over the day so that they don't take place uh, at the same time. Smaller exams like languages, uh, that's where we often have like uh, 60, 70 students per language. Then we can have multiple language exams at the same time, up to 200, 300 students. And that is where we uh, have the cutoff point. And that is just to not, um, put 
too heavy a load on uh, Sakai's testing quizzes, and that is especially when we have um, uh, if you randomize the questions and if you have calculated questions, then it becomes quite a heavy burden. And what we do for every student, uh, for uh, every testing quiz, is um, we provide a sliding window uh, of 40 minutes where students can start up. So a good thing uh, with ProctorTrack is that every student takes slightly different amount of time uh, to do the room scan, the desk scan, etc. It's somewhere between zero and four minutes, which also makes that uh, the burden on Sky's testing quizzes is also spread over those four minutes instead of everyone hitting at the same time at the start of the exam begin assessment and then put stress on the database, um, we actually get uh, them to, to, to drip in in four minutes gradually. And um, that also has uh, provided us with uh, yeah, a, a far better uh, performing uh, testing quizzes tool. And uh, for tech issues, uh, we have two persons, myself and a colleague of mine, who are continuously supporting the students, if necessary. And uh, we found that if we provide 40 minutes of late start time, so we actually have an allowed late submit, which is 40 minutes on top of the, time, the timer end time. And that way we have 40 minutes to get a student still on board without them losing any timer time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, in real life sit down exams, it's like you may enter the room up to 30 minutes late. And we made it now, you may enter the room up to 40 minutes late because that was the maximum time we needed to get truly everyone on board. And we have not lost a single student. Uh, I have to state, except for one who actually uh, tried two computers and broke down two computers at the start of the exam. But that was the one and only student that we have lost and not been able to get on board. And for the rest, every student, we get them on board. Hmm. And um, yeah, during the start of the exam, we actually have usually three windows open. One is the proctor track uh, window so that we see who should be on board according to proctor track. We have one window open with which are the tests, which uh, or uh, how many participants do we have on board, and we always have the event log open, sorted uh, top down on the error, uh, so that we see who are the password errors, because that is actually most of the errors we get nowadays is students forgetting to copy and paste the proper password from ProctorTrack into the uh, testing quiz. Mm -hmm. And we stand have half under the, the, the uh, under the paste button. We have the sentence, copy the access code right top right hand corner and paste it into the testing quiz. And we, we just um, we already send that out via MS Teams before they even ask us, hey, we need support because we uh, can't get in. And usually mm -hmm. we find that they're all in within like 10 minutes time of the start uh, after the start, official start time of the exam. The majority of students is already in. Um, so one more kind of clarification question. Yeah. So it, it sounds like your exams are really administered centrally rather than by individual faculty. Am I interpreting that correctly? Um, not entirely. Um, the faculty actually set up the exams within testing quizzes. But, mm -hmm. um, it's always, uh, at this point in time, it's me going over the exam together with the faculty. Um, and that is mainly to do the settings and uh, set up the exam in ProctorTrack itself. Uh, because mm -hmm. that's where, in the beginning, and um, we found that a lot of mistakes could be made if you would leave it to the faculty. Um, and I want to keep the four eyes control principle, especially uh, we found with one of the early exams, one faculty actually copied in the exam URL twice into the proctor track link. So we thought uh, the exam is not working, but it was actually, well, there was no work site because the link was copied in, uh, pasted in twice. So, uh, but 
since we started doing the, the four eyes control principle, we never have an issue with the times are set wrong or the dates are set wrong or the settings are wrong. Um, I always check it with the responsible faculty that created the exam. I always check their settings. It costs me a little bit of time, but um, that way we could really uh, bring down the number of issues we had because people did not get extra time or whatever might be uh, the issue. So um, it's really worth and we're now looking into setting up a real exam office that uh, could do this a bit more, not really centrally, but that they take over this task from me and that we have a more closed exam cycle from authoring, but also afterwards looking at the quality of the exam and uh, giving feedback about that and increasing the quality of the exam, actually. And, uh, that's a project that will start next academic year, first thing. Mm -hmm. Any other clarification needed or question that I can answer? Anybody else have any questions? I've been kind of monopolizing for me. <laughs> and I'm I'm very interested in, in, in seeing whether you have indeed thought about it or if you have used something or what would be the pros and the cons that you see of um, proctored exams, except for the most yeah. obvious ones. And that sounds yeah. Yeah, as I said, we we have used Proctor Track on a limited basis. Um, we did not um, roll it out um, across all courses. It was a by request only um, to have Proctor Track added to an instructor's course. Um, we I do not believe we were requiring the room scan. I think it was just kind of the, the face scan. Um, it was more for um, identification purposes. Yeah. Um, and also recording during the, during the exam as well. Um, so I don't think we're not using it quite as extensively as you guys are. Um, I haven't been directly um, involved in the support of that. Um, so I'm not sure exactly um, how many people were using it um, and um, what kind of responses they were getting from their students. Mm -hmm. um, I, know there, I know there was some um, pushback from, from students in general about using proctoring software. Um, we, also, we also did have an opt-out option of some okay. kind. I don't remember exactly what, what the alternative arrangements would be, but, but we did have an, an opt out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, what I um, actually asked also to uh, Josh and Vilma uh, was uh, I think that uh, in this uh, day and age where we actually must move. Uh, at least that is what I feel within Europe, there's going to be a lot more online education, distance education or partial distance, uh, distance education, like a hybrid form, because people, uh, both students and faculty actually started to like it a lot with uh, possibilities that we have now. And um, I think that Sakai could really be uh, become together with the testing quizzes tool if you would have at least a level one proctoring so a lockdown possibility built in or shipped in with sakai i think that would tremendously uh, increase the potential use of sakai because when we did our round for for looking into a digital assessment tool just at the beginning of uh uh, the whole COVID uh, lockdown uh, issue, we actually found that there is no tool better than testing quizzes. It serves the purpose so much better than any tool out there. And if you could combine that with 
a lockdown tool which is shipped with Sakai. I think Sakai could be sold so much uh, better to uh, the, 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 the needy communities out there. So that, that is actually how this, this conversation somewhat started uh, with uh, Josh and Wilma. Because I think a, a level one, uh, a, a lockdown tool, whether that's an open source tool as an add-on or a contrib tool, or if it could be built in into Sakai, I'm not sure how difficult that would be. I think it would be very difficult. But um, if there's a sense of need of the teaching and learning group, or if the teaching and learning group says, hey, you guys in the Netherlands, do your thing, but, uh, we live and we're fine with it, but I think that uh, all our faculty faculty are actually asking, um, even if we are going back to on-campus assessments, if it could still be um, digital on-campus assessments, because it saves tremendously in uh, if you built it right. Uh, you can use question banks, which you cannot do as easily with uh, mm -hmm a paper exam with randomized questions that change themselves on the go, like calculated questions. Um, and um, like 70% of the exam will grade itself. And with the uh, right answer and wrong answer feedback options, you give a double um, uh, learning curve to the students, not only while taking the exam, but also a total statistical uh, drill down on how they did versus the aggregated others. And they see how they uh, did on every part of the exam, and they see what did I do wrong, what should I have done, where should I read, uh, what should I read up in mm -hmm. order to come to a higher level. So in that sense, it really provides such a wealth of, 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 yeah, uh, learning curve steepness to our students that uh, all the, both the faculty and the students really like that way of examination. So in that sense, I think uh, we will not go back to only paper exams anymore. We will definitely keep as many as possible in this format or have them uh, indeed in one of the other exam formats, which we also have looked into, but it's not possible to make everything into a continuous report or a continuous assessment or a presentation format. We just had to do also some application of knowledge. And I have to say that with the ex uh, uh, testing quizzes, question types that we have, especially the hotspot questions, uh, we've been uh, able to make the most difficult theories and have students apply cases, parts of cases, and then they have to say from this theorem or uh, this uh, model, it's this where this part of the case is sitting, it's that where this part of the case is sitting. And the mix and match questions, they really serve the purpose of making the, the hardest question types. So um, yeah, we, we are totally content with uh, what testing quizzes is capable of doing. And yeah, it, it might be a bit more friendly on the user interface side, both from faculty and student side, but the capabilities it has, it's tremendous. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're about out of time. Thank <laughs> you very much for that. No, that's fine. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, very interesting. interesting Thank you for how, allowing me. How you guys are are using that. Um, let's see, I'm just going back to our agenda here. I can't. My window. Um. Yeah. All right, um, so just to wrap up today's meeting, um, we do not have anything scheduled for next um, meeting, which is July 21st. Um, if nothing comes up, I assume we will probably do a Jirapalooza. I'm sure there's stuff coming out um, with the new version that people might be interested in talking about. Um, so if you do have any Jiras that you'd like to discuss, um, Got a bunch from from Tiffany that we've been tabling when when she hasn't been here, but um, 
If there are some things that you'd um, like to discuss, let Panda or myself know, and we can add them to the agenda. Or if you have another topic that you think might be useful to discuss or you would like to present on, again, let us know. Anybody else has any comments or anything else to add to today's meeting? Speak now. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and end the recording and say good morning. All right, have a good week, all.